on-chain layer is what we call is everything that happens to something off-chain all the way up until it becomes on-chain. And so we have a global infrastructure of nodes and we have these tools to help you manage that pre-chain layer. And one such tool is something called Web3 Onboard. And this is gonna help your users onboarding onto your DAP. So we live in this, this multi-wallet, multi-chain world, okay? And increasingly this, this landscape of uh, you know, new wallets popping up, new chains popping up, right? We wanna make sure that your users can access their preferred wallets on their preferred networks. But this can kind of be challenging as developers. Maybe some of you have actually experienced these challenges before. So here's an example of a dApp that allows, uh, on, the, on the left-hand side here, you have uh, three options of wallets, or you have on the right-hand side, you know, 35 different wallets. Now, um, also what we have is the ability to access harder wallets that you might not be able to access, and there's a lot of high-value users on those harder wallets, right? Maybe our, we're talking about whales at this point, right? And not only that, but there's this, uh, the, the, the landscape of L2s is, is vastly, is like vast and it's rapidly increasing with like new L2s popping up every day. And so, in order, and like users are moving to these L2s. And so we want to be able to capture those users and we want to capture the engagement, right? And so how do we simplify this? How do we make it easier for these users to interact with it? So at Block Native, we think there's a better way. So here's an example of Web3 Onboard, it's, it shows you how you can seamlessly transition your users between different chains. And so, I, as a core uh, developer of Web3 Onboard, um, I had the opportunity to work with some amazing and intelligent people to build this tool that enables us to like kind of work in this, this, this pre-chain layer. Okay, so, what is this, what is this thing I'm talking about up here? So, we have support for the, like, the leading like, uh, software and hardware wallets, right? And for me, when I was working on this, I didn't, I didn't actually get it at first. I said, well, what is this onboard thing? Like, why do we need it, okay? But then I started implementing hardware wallet modules. I don't know if anyone's worked with Keystone, Ledger, Trezor, there's so many of them, right? And everyone wants to use the wallet that they wanna use. But when I started like, working on onboard and building out the code that required, is required to like, support these uh, hardware wallets, I quickly realized like, this is something that I would never want to have to like deal with as a DAP developer. I want to focus on the core functionality of my DAP. I don't want to deal with this stuff. And it's like there's some really tricky stuff going there. Seamless switching between networks. Again, it can get confusing for your users. Which network am I on, right? You don't want to have them send to an address that, has, like, that they can't access, right? Because they thought they're on this network, but then they sent to that address. Like, you know, this stuff happens, right? So this is really important for your users. So right here we have a one-line uh, NPM install. Okay, this is how you do it, right here, super simple. And so this is the, the onboard, uh, the Web3 onboard core. In the demo today, I'm gonna show you the React hooks that we actually use. We have a demo on our, our, our repo that's uh, in Svelte, and it can show you how to kind of use that without the React hooks. But uh, here's an example right here of how, how simple it is and how quick it is to integrate. Rapid prototyping. This is the, our React demo. It shows the full functionality of Web3 onboard. Now, you, I encourage you to go there. If you can grab the link if you want, even go play around with it. But essentially, this is what we use for people to end up, uh, to go there and go and test it out and play with it. What I built for today, for this demo, is like a slimmed down version of it to make it abundantly clear kind of what's going on with Web3 Onboard. Um, and, in, and in terms of rapid prototyping, a little anecdote, uh, who is at ETH Denver? And who participated in the hackathon? Nice, couple, a couple of people. So I did as well. And for our hackathon project, we ended up using Web3 Onboard. I popped it in there, and then we focused on our dApp, and we ended up winning the uh, virtual uh, NFT track for the uh, hackathon, which is really cool. So the features of Web3 Onboard. Minimal dependency. Web3 Onboard is modular, okay? And if you've ever like, done any web development, you know how important it is to make sure that you don't include dependencies that you don't want, right? Node.js developers know that dependency hell is a real thing. It keeps you up at night. And so with Web3 Onboard, it's modular. So include the modules that you want to use. Do you want to support, you don't want to support Trezor? Leave it out. Don't want to support MetaMask? Leave it out. You know, so it enables you to really modularize your application, reducing the, uh, the, the size. This is a really big um, ask because the original version of Onboard didn't have this. And so it ended up being this huge bloated uh, library. But this one's a lot, like this one's a lot simpler. Multiple wallets and account connections. So this one's really key. I think this is super awesome. You could have Ledger, Trezor, Keystone, MetaMask, Binance, Smart Chain, Coinbase Wallet, all connected to a single DAP. 
and we provide a really easy interface for interacting with those different connected wallets. And then obviously, with each of those wallets, you can support multiple accounts within each wallet, right? And then we have multi-chain support. Again, I'll show you this in the demo, but it's going to make it really easy for you to manage those different networks and different chains that your users are going to want to interact with. And finally, or not finally, but uh, the unified provider interface. So when building this thing, I don't know if anyone's ever has experienced this the same way I have, but we all know that the Ethereum provider, depending on the wallet, changes. It's non-deterministic. You call the request method and you expect something to happen, something else happens. You expect to get a certain error code back, but this, but this uh, provider decided to implement this error code and that provider decided to implement this error code, right? So what you get with Web3 Onboard is this unified deterministic provider, okay? So whether you're interacting with Ledger or MetaMask, it's gonna act the exact same. And to me, that was like mind blowing. And obviously we're all compliant with the specifications. And then finally, dynamic imports, which basically means that uh, we load our dependencies on demand. So it reduces uh, load times for your users and it like minimizes the, like, the bandwidth that's used. 